And the clinical relevance to this is coming from the Women's Health Initiative study. Uh, 10,000 of these women were on statins, 140 were not. What happened? The women that were on statins, three years later, the chances of be them being a diabetic was a little close to 10% compared to 6% in women not taking statins, a 3.5% difference. If you were a Hispanic, you are more susceptible to statin damage, and the difference was not 3.5%, it was 5%. If you were an Asian like me, the difference was not 3.5%, it was 7%. Now we've talked about CoQ10 a lot. The way I talk about CoQ10 is that it is the spark plug of an engine. If the engine doesn't have spark plug, it cannot burn fuel. Similarly, if our mitochondria don't have CoQ10, they cannot create usable energy, which is called ATP, and CoQ10 is a cholesterol byproduct. So my fellow Texan, Dr. Lance Joan, took 10 patients who were on statins, he did muscle biopsies, he did blood work, and he compared them to nine matched controls. And out in the blue line, what you're seeing is how the matched controls performed. And compared to that blue line, the people who were on statins had higher blood pressure, higher sugars, they had lower CoQ10 in their muscles. They made less enzymes that uh, prevented oxida oxidative damage or free radical damage. They were not able to generate the energy currency because they didn't have CoQ10, and they were insulin resistant. So Dr. Lance Juen took 328 patients that presented to his office and were on statins, and he found that 50 of these patients complained that they were having myalgias, that they were fatigued, that they were having shortness of breath, that they were having memory issues. And he stopped their statins. And when he stopped their statins, majority of them improved. In 28 of these patients, they had heart muscle dysfunction that he evaluated with an ultrasound of the heart called an echocardiogram. When he stopped the statins, 50% of these individuals improved. The other 50% did not improve, which means that statins, cessation of statins may not lead to improvement in everyone. So it, this is something that was not good information for the statin industry. And what they did is to say, hey, let's go on offense and say that using statins will prevent mortality in people who have congestive heart failure. Heart failure is a situation in which the heart muscle is not pumping well. So what they did is to compare people who had heart failure who were on statins compared to who were not on statins. And this is an unfair comparison. Because if you t bring me a patient with heart failure and they have high cholesterol, I know they're going to live forever. A proper way to compare is to see the group of people who are on statins, if they're taking statins f less frequently in the middle or taking it uh, more than 75% of the time, who does better? And that's the comparison I did. So if you were taking statins less frequently, you were less likely to die. In fact, the highest mortality was there in the group that took the statins most of the time. Not just all-cause mortality, you were at greater risk of strokes, you were at greater risks of getting heart attacks. 